That's a meal for a while after. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your mercies and your great kindness towards us. And we approach your righteous throne now, Lord, as we are about to open up your word, we are pleading for the guidance of your spirit. We are pleading that our hearts and minds will be receptive to the impressions of your spirit. And that I really plead for that, that the convictions you lay in our hearts, the truth you make manifest to us will not merely be a theory that would give us more intellectual knowledge, but truth that will reach our hearts and transform our lives. Please, Father, I truly plead for your divine grace now. May your spirit please take the field. May you please, Lord, save us into your kingdom, impress upon our hearts the necessity to step forth and truly to war against sin. Please uplift your son, Jesus, that we might see him dripping wet with blood, that the spell of sin might be broken within our lives and that we might be prepared to meet you in peace. Please bless us now, Father, and abide with us. I pray this humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Um, Come in your Bible to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Um, uh, we're going to look Yeah, there's actually a lot of verses we want to look at. Um, but what we're going to be studying today is actually inspiration says that the most value, value, most value, valuable part of the Bible or that which is the most value, valuable part as an educator of the Bible, she says, is its biographies. So inspiration says that the biographies are the most valuable part of the Bible. She says specifically as an educator. So in other words, if I want education concerning holiness, righteousness, purity, she says the best thing to study is the biographies. She says there's no part of the Bible as a greater educator than its biographies. That's Education 146. What I want us to study we studied a few weeks back in our, our evening Bible study class, we looked at the biography of Cain and Abel. Remember, we studied Cain and Abel. What we're going to be studying the biography today, we want to specifically study a man whom Jesus specifically mentions um, by name. And not only do we want to study um, the experience of this man, we also want to look at the, the, the prophetic sequence of events. See, many people charge us with this claim, where do we get it from the Bible, that human probation closes before the second coming of Jesus. Actually, yeah, it's a, it's a lengthy period of time before Jesus Christ comes, probation closes. And we want to look at even that time, but we get charged with that, with, with, with that to say, where do you all get that from in the Bible? Now I'm throwing that out to you all. Where do you all, where, because we, I'm you know, we Seventh day Adventists, at least most of us here. Do we believe that human probation closes before Jesus Christ comes? Yes. 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 So I'm saying, where in the Bible do you see this idea, whether it's directly or indirectly, you see that human probation precedes the coming of Jesus? Okay, Daniel 12 verse 1 um, does speak about a close of probation. That is true, Felix, but you're not going to see the sequence of events in the sense that probation closes and Jesus comes. I'm saying, we're, and obviously that is true, you have to, but if you're going to say Daniel 12, 1, we can work with that, but you're going to have to build on it. So I'm saying that's true, you can share with someone Daniel 12, verse 1, that shows a closing of probation, that is true. That is true. 
actually, yes, you can work with Daniel 12 verse 1, but then it brings to view verse 2 as the special resurrection. So it will be a bit difficult to show there's close approbation and then resurrection. You could work with that, but you're going to, because verse 2 is not talking about the general resurrection. Daniel 12 verse 2 talks about the special resurrection. Do you have a comment? I saw you pick up your hand. Oh, oh sorry, I thought, I thought. So, we can't, we, yes, Daniel 12, but any, uh, I'm saying we're seven day Adventists. How would we be able to show from the Bible? Now, in Great Controversy, page 594, Great Controversy 594, actually 598, she says, We have a chart pointing out every way more on our heavenward journey, and we ought to guess at nothing. So, we ought to guess at nothing. So she says we have a chart that points out every waymark. A waymark tells you how close you are to your destination. And the close of human probation, I, I will tell you that's one of the lost waymarks on our heavenward journey. Because when probation closes, I, I mean, you don't need to worry about any more waymarks. It is over. But let me say this, even though where we are standing, where we are standing now, looking forward to, to what is to come, even though we can identify by prophetic sequence of events when probation closes, do you know that when probation does close, even though students of prophecy, the 144,000, won't know that human probation is closed? Inspiration says not even Satan. She says Satan infers probation is closed. He doesn't know probation is closed. How does he infer? He sees the angels around those people those 144,000 and in first probation is closed. He, he doesn't fully see it. And even 144,000, they don't even know probation is closed. But I'm saying, how would we know looking forward? Because inspiration says we have a chart pointing out every way mark on our heavenward journey and we ought to guess at nothing. Are we guessing when we say probation closes and then Jesus Christ comes? We're not guessing. Now, let me give one more quotation, GC, Great Controversy 5.9, what did I, 5.9, 5.9.4, this is 5.9.4. She says, so in the prophecy, so where? In the prophecies, the future is open before us as plainly as it was to the disciples by the words of Christ. By whose words? The words of Christ. Then she says, the events in connection with the close of probation and the preparation for the time of trouble are clearly presented. But multitudes have no more understanding of these important truths as if they have never been revealed. Satan watches to catch away every impression that would make them wise unto salvation, that the time of trouble might find them unprepared. So she says these things are clearly presented, that what leads up to the close of probation, the Bible teaches that she says, yet multitudes have no more understanding of these important truths. She says Satan watches to steal these things away from them, that they might be found unprepared for the crisis before us. So again, my question is, are we as, because this Thursday night Bible studies, we're not just trying to rush through information. We're trying to build what we believe because I said, no, no, these, these evening Bible study classes, we need to know what we believe. We need to know what we believe. So oh, inspiration says it, she says it. So I want to give us, because Paul says in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 1, 2, he says that upon two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So how is the doctrine established? Not upon one witness, but upon at least two or three witnesses. Then that doctrine is established. So what I'm going to say today, friends, as I was saying, we were driving, picking up our brother. What I said, I saw something that I've never seen as clear in my study today. I saw it very clear. And let me tell you what I saw. That we are surrounded. Yeah, I, that's what I saw. We are surrounded. From the Bible. The, what I saw, I, I knew it's biblical. I knew, but I never ever seen it in the Bible so clear. What we're about to look at. So inspiration says that the events, this quotation is going to be our thematic quotation. The events in connection with what? in connection with what? The close of probation. 
Now let me ask you something. Do you think that the, the, the events is, are, are important? Think of it. Probation, the close in connection, I never put you in connection with the close of probation. Now think of it. When, proba when probation closes, can you be saved? If you are lost, can you be saved? No. So what, what then becomes important? It's those events that lead up to what? The close of probation. Now we don't have to guess. We don't have to guess. When I say guess, I mean we can definitely not know the exact day and hour. That no man can know. As long as probation is open, any man who stands up and says, 2025, September the 15th, we're going to see a Sunday law. That man's deluded. You cannot give it. The inspiration says after 1844, we got no definite time. But based on the prophetic events, we can look. And if it's all pointing to one year, we can say plus minus that year. A storm will break. Now, we'll study another thing where people get confused about time setting. What is time setting and what's not time setting? This is not my study now. I don't want to get into that now. But nonetheless, what leads up to the close of probation? She says there are, in, there are events that she says are connected to the close of probation. That means when I see these events, what must I realize that I'm nearing? If, if she says that the events are clearly presented, I am nearing what? The close of probation. Now, let me tell you whose biography we're studying. Whose biography, biography we're studying in connection with the study. There are three men that God speaks about in Ezekiel 14, 14 and Ezekiel 14, verse 20. And he specifically mentions that these men obtain righteousness by faith. She, he mentions twice, though Noah, though Daniel, though Job or Enoch, saith the Lord, as I love, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, but their own righteousness, God says, they deliver themselves. In other words, the crisis before us I cannot stand for anyone and not anyone can stand for me. Each man's going to have to have an experience for himself. Remember the foolish version said to the wise, the wise version, give us of your oil. And they said, not so. Not so. I cannot give you my experience. You must have your own experience with Christ. Now, friends, what I'm going to suggest to you, we are nearing the close of human probation. And... There are three men that God identifies for the lost generation. He mentions three of them. Enoch, uh, Noah, Job, and Daniel. These three men. In Sons and Daughters, page 257. It's a 257, 259, 259. Ellen White says, one interest will prevail. One subject will swallow up all others. Christ, our righteousness. What topic, she says, very soon, no one's going to be studying and talking about nothing else but one thing, Christ our righteousness. So when God speaks about righteousness by faith, he mentions three men specifically, Noah, Job, and Daniel, these three men. But when you come to Matthew, the 24th chapter, Jesus highlights one specifically. Now he highlights two, but I want to zoom into the other one he highlights at the end of the chapter, and that is the man Noah. That is the man Noah. Why Noah? Because Jesus says in verse 37, are we there? Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. He says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Let's pause there, let's pause there. We're building a case now. Before we even begin studying Noah and his experience, we need to show how, how near we are to the eternal world. Now, what I want us to see, what I want us to see, Jesus likens, he says, as it was in the days of who? So shall it be also in the coming of the Son of Man. So what can I know for sure? If, if, if I'm going to, if I want to know the connection or the events that lead up to the coming of Jesus, where does Jesus direct me to? The days of Noah. The days of Noah. The days of Noah. So the days of Noah is linked to what? The, the second coming of Jesus. Now, I want you to see that we as Adventists have not made up a close of probation and then destruction. The close of probation and then the coming of Jesus. 
I want us to see, are we in Matthew chapter 24? Matthew the 24th chapter. I want you to see what it says in the next verse. Let's see in the days of Noah, was there a close of probation? Let's see in the days of Noah, was there a close of probation? In Matthew the 24th chapter, verse 38 now. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until, keyword, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So there, there's one until. Can you see that until there? That says that they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, appetite and passion. Ma this was been the sons been indulging. Then it says, Jesus says, after that, he said they knew not, keyword, until Noah entered into the ark. And then let's continue reading. Keep that one until. Verse 39. And knew not until, second until, the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, how many untils do you see there? What's the first until connected, connected with? So the first until, you see two untils. The first until, uh, it is linked to what? Entering the ark. When Noah went into the ark. Entering the ark. So there was something about entering the ark that they knew not. That it was linked to their destiny. When Noah entered into the ark, their destiny was fixed, so to speak. And then it says, until what? Until the flood came. And then what? And took them all away. <coughs> Meaning it destroyed them. Now, I don't know, does anybody know from the time Noah entered into the ark until destruction, does anybody know the time period? How, how long? Can you give me Bible? Where? Chapter? <coughs> yeah. Uh, oh, show me where in chapter 7. It's chapter, oh, yeah. we're playing around. Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7, verse 16. Genesis 7, verse 16. It says, And they went in, and went in male and female, of all flesh, as, as God had commanded him. Now, I'm coming to the seven days, but look at this. It says, And the Lord shut him in. So when Noah went into the ark, what happened? To, what, what, happened? what did the Lord do? He shut him in. There was no way Noah could have closed that door. That's too big for Noah. So it says that the Lord shut him in. Now, question. When the Lord shut Noah in, question, question. Could, could Noah go out the ark or could anyone outside the ark get into the ark? The, when the door of the ark was closed, was every man's destiny fixed? It was fixed. What do you call that when every man's destiny is fixed? Thank you. Thank you. You call that the close of probation. So I can put this here. I can put here. I can put here that when Noah entered into the ark, I can put here that probation closed. Now my question is... Yes, we're getting there. We're getting there. So my question is this now. My question is this. When the door of the ark was closed or when probation was closed, the destruction come immediately upon the antediluvians. <clears throat> so question, did man continue living as per normal, unbeknown to them, that the irrevocable decision has been made? Yes. Yes. So question now, how many days you said in between? Genesis 7 verse 10. It says, and it came to pass after seven days, the waters of the flood were upon the earth. How many days? Yes. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you, I want you to reason and think with me. Kinwen, who do you think was being tested during the seven days? Who do you think it was a period of trial, a period of testing time for those outside the ark for, or for those inside the ark? Uh, all right uh, okay or maybe i never asked the question right i never asked it right who do you think was being who do you think was going through a test in time meaning thought maybe i'm deluded who do you think thought that they were deluded those outside or him inside 
the one inside. So that was a period of trial for Noah, a period of testing, a period of difficulty during the seven days. Think about it. You preach a message, you jump into the ark, the door is shut. Day one, there's no rain. Day two, there's no rain. Day three, you know what happens in at least a day four, day five, you start thinking to yourself, was I correct in what I was saying? You say, that's not possible. Reason with me. Who pointed to Jesus and said, behold the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world? John the Baptist. Who saw the Spirit of God based on John chapter 1 descending upon Jesus? John the Baptist. But you come to Matthew 11, John sends his disciples or a message to Jesus saying, are you the Messiah or do we look for another? Can you see when a man goes to trial, he, he often forgets his past experience. So what I'm saying is, you, you say that's not possible. Think of Jesus. Think of Jesus. Did Jesus tell his disciples he's going to die? Did he tell them he's going to resurrect on the third day? And he's going to go before them to Galilee? But question, when Jesus was going through the experience in Gethsemane, could Jesus see through the portal of the tomb? Could he see himself coming out victorious? No. What I'm trying to show you that what is clear to us before a crisis, when we're inside that crisis, what was clear before becomes foggy. Can you see that? Trial can make things which were clear difficult to see. So what I'm saying during this period was a time of testing. These seven days, a time of what? Testing. Let me say this. Time of, what you said? For the people in the righteous. A time of testing, let's put it here. Testing for the righteous. Now, by the way, why am I doing this? Why, am I, why are we looking at the days of Noah and the order of events? Why are we doing that? I mark in. Are we just trying to understand what happened in the days of Noah? What did Jesus say about the days of Noah? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the coming of the Son of Man. So the order of events in the days of Noah are the same order of events I might see just before he comes. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, after this testing time on day 8, what happened on day 8? You know, I looked at the prophet says, cataracts of water fell down. So I looked at that word. What does she mean, cataract? I look, you know what's a cat? We you know when you're standing at a, a, a fall where, where the water's going down, that, what do you call that thing? Water, water. Waterfall. Yeah, you, you see how the water's, it's not falling in drops. It's cut. She says that's how it was raining. Not in drops. Not a drop here and a drop there. Like, like literally the, the fountains of the heavens are opened up. And water was pouring down like, like literally like a, like a waterfall was falling. Like a waterfall was falling. So the flood, it says they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Now my question was, when was their destruction certain? When the flood came and took them all away? Or when the door of the ark shut? When was their destruction certain? When the flood came and took them away or when the door shut? When the door shut. So what will the shutting of the door be symbolic of? Because, sorry? No, no, sorry, not the shutting of the door, sorry. The flood coming and taking them all away. What will that be symbolic of? Can't be the crisis. Can't be the crisis. The, the crisis happens during the seven days, the testing, testing of the righteousness. The coming of Christ. Because question, did the flood come and destroy all the wicked? When will all the wicked be destroyed? But at the second coming of Jesus, not by the plagues, yes, some of them might, might die. But it's only at the second coming of Jesus that all the wicked will be destroyed. Now, I don't know if you can see a chart. I don't know if you can see a chart. Inspiration says we have a chart pointing out every way mark on our heavenward journey, and we ought to guess at nothing. So what I'm seeing, let me just tell you what I'm seeing from this, what we've, what we've put together. This is what I'm seeing. Let me make, try and make this a bit bigger. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing. This 
This is what I'm seeing. There's a close of probation. After the close of probation, looking, if I'm looking here, what must I see? A period of what? Te thank you. A period of? Who's been tested here? A period of testing or trial. Let's put it like that. A period of testing or trial. After the period of testing or trial, what must happen to all the wicked? Destroy it. So what, must, what events will destroy all the wicked? 2 Thessalonians, the coming of Jesus, verse 7 and 8, chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. So the second coming of Jesus. Now, for Noah, from the shut door till destruction, how much time elapsed? From the close of probation to the second coming of Jesus, how many plagues will fall? Seven. Let's put the seven last plagues. Seven plagues. Now, from the close of probation to the coming of Jesus, how many plagues must fall? Does any, biblically, I'm going to show you that when probation closes, for the seven plagues to fall, it takes one literal year for the seven plagues to fall. So from the close of probation to the coming of Jesus is one literal year. Come with me to Revelations, the 18th chapter. Revelation chapter 18. Revelations, the 18th. One, one year. For the old seven plagues, one year. Twelve months. Revelations, the 18th chapter. Mark it. Revelation chapter 18. Mark it. Revelations 18. I want us to see Revelations, the 18th chapter, verse 5. It says in Revelation 18 verse 5, speaking about Babylon, the mother of harlots, this apostate union of church and state, uh, apostate Protestants, Catholic spiritualism, kings of the earth. Verse 5 says, for her sins have reached unto heaven and God had remembered her iniquities. Verse 6, reward her even as she rewarded you double unto her double according to her works in the cup which he had filled filled to her double now look at verse 8 look at verse 8 talking about the plagues coming on babylon the roman catholic church and apostate protestants verse 8 it says therefore shall her plagues come in one day death fam death morning and famine let's pause there how long will the plagues come for how long Someone says, how did you get a year? Numbers 14, 34 says, a day in prophecy equals what? One year. Ezekiel 4, 6 says, one day in prophecy is what? One year. So how long does God say the plagues will fall upon Babylon? He says in one day. But one day in Bible prophecy equals what? One year. So the plagues are going to fall for one year. So I want to ask you, how long will be the trial of God's people? Dead. One year. One year. Now let me tell you what's, what's happening. The 144,000 have been de they're developed here. But you might say, why is God putting them through the furnace? Because she says that God, hmm, Lucifer, comes before, he, 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 he complains to God. When he looks at the 144,000, she says in great controversy, controversy that they are resisting his supremacy. You say, what does she mean resisting his supremacy? See, Satan can't claim the world as his own. If there's a group of people in the world that are not committing sin, they have gained victory over sin. Now you might say, well, then what's the purpose of God putting them through a trial? Because they've already gained victory. She says, God must cleanse them from earthliness, not worldliness, Earthliness, that's something completely, something different. The lost link that binds them to this earth, she says God places them in the furnace of affliction. The same experience Jesus had, the 144,000 are going to go through. Where they can't see the face of God, it seems as if God has forsaken them. Come with me to Isaiah. Isaiah, what is it? Isaiah, this verse came to mind now. I think it's Isaiah 54, if I'm not mistaken. Come with me there quickly. I want you to see what God says up to these people living at this time, Isaiah 54. I want you to see what God says to them. Isaiah 54, verse 7 and 8. 
Listen to what God says, because they're going to have a similar experience where it seems as if God has forsaken them. But they're actually placed in a furnace of affliction. Isaiah 54, verse 7 and 8. It says, For a small moment I have forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little rot, I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Can you see what God has said? That he's going to hide himself from them for a little while. Why is he places them in the furnace of affliction? Preparing them not to die, but he's preparing them to step from this world straight into the eternal world without seeing death. This is what he's preparing them for, translation. And therefore, he must place them in the furnace of affliction. He must place them there. Now, this is Bible. Come with me to Revelation 22. Let me keep second witness now. Second witness, Revelation chapter 22, and then we move on. Revelation, the 22nd chapter. I want us to see Revelation chapter 22. Friends, we've got some interesting things to look at, and I just hope we can get there quickly. Revelation 22, I want us to see verse 11. Revelation 22, verse 11. It says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. What do you call this? Close of probation. So there's the close of probation. What's the next event? Verse 12. What's the next event after the close of probation? The next great event. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. So can you see that before the second coming of Jesus, what must take place? Close of probation. There must be a close of probation. But when probation closes, how will man be living? How will man be living? Will they know probation is closed like in the days of Noah? Did they know the probation is closed? No. They continue living life as per normal. I think it's in GC. Great Controversy, page 4, is it 491? <coughs> she says, silently unnoticed like, the mid, like a midnight thief will come the irrevocable decision which fixes or marks every man's destiny. So she says it comes like a midnight thief. When a midnight thief comes, does he warn you I'm coming? Mm -mm. If he warns you, then he, he has, he's not a thief. So uh, he comes when you're, not, when you're sleeping. So she says the close of probation is going to come like a midnight thief. Suddenly unnoticed will come the, the fixing of every man's destiny. Now I want you to see this quotation. I want you to see this GC 491. Unless someone says we stretch the Bible to come up with this thing of the close of probation in the days of Noah and the close of probation in our times. Listen to what the prophet says, GC 491. She says the righteous and the wicked will still be living upon the earth in their mortal state. Men will be planting and building, eating and drinking, all unconscious that the final irrevocable decision has been pronounced in the sanctuary above. What does she say here? All or what? Unconscious that the final irrevocable decision has been pronounced in the sanctuary above. So when probation closes, will man know probation today is now closed? No. She says to all, all unconscious that the final irrevocable decision has been pronounced in the sanctuary above. So there's not some thunderous announcement that probation is closed. Men continue living as per normal, going to work, doing this, doing that, as per normal. Unbeknown to them, their destiny has been fixed for eternity. Yes. Yes. Hit by uh, uh, the whole world was shocked. Yes, yes, yes. She says, before, now look, look, look where does she take us to, to illustrate the, what she's saying is true. That probation comes when it closes, no one knows. She says here in the next, in the red words, she says before the flood, 
After Noah entered the ark, God shut him in and shut the ungodly out. But for seven days, the people, knowing not that their doom was fixed, continued their careless, pleasure-loving life and mocked the warnings of impending judgment. So says the Savior, shall also the coming of the Son of Man be silently, unnoticed as a midnight thief will come the decisive hour which marks the fixing of every man's destiny, the final withdrawal of mercy's offer to guilty man. So how does the prophet see, how, how does the prophet illustrate to us the truthfulness of our words that when probation closes, men will continue living as per normal unbeknown to them? Which, where does she direct us to? The days of, the days of Noah. The days of Noah. Now, now, friends, I want to speak to us about the days of Noah. Time is against us, but that's, that's my study. But I, I'm still building a case. I want to get to Noah and study his experience. But before I study his experience, I first need to show us the urgency of having his experience. Now, what I want us to do, I want us to come with me to Revelations, the 16th chapter. Inspiration says in testimonies to ministers, no, no, gospel workers 148, she says ministers should present a sure word of prophecy as the foundation of the faith of Seventh-day Adventists. She says the books of Daniel and Revelation should be carefully studied. That's gospel workers 148, we're in Revelation 16. So this is what we do, we are carefully studying the book of Revelation in connection with Daniel. Are we in Revelation 16? Now, what I want us to see, what I want us to see, remember she says we have a chart pointing out every way more on our heavenward journey and we ought to guess at nothing. So now let me ask you this, can these events help you? I'm saying, if your probation's closed, I'm saying, can you make any decision for life or death? No, so what we've studied as yet is no benefit in and of itself. Remember she says, what, must, what, what will help us? There's events in connection to the close of probation. So what I want to see is what event precedes the closing of human probation. Now, by the way, when the plagues come, is probation open or closed? It's closed. Now, I want us to see in Revelation 16, before the plagues come, before probation closes, what event must take place? Revelation 16, 2. It says, and the first went and poured out his veil upon the earth. That's the first plague. Now look at who the plagues fall on. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image. So what must happen before the close of probation or before the plagues come, either however you want to call it, what must happen before this distance? The mark of the beast and the formation of what? The image, it says there, the image of the beast. So before probation can close, what must I expect to see? The image of the beast, which gives birth to the mark of the beast. Now the image of the beast, simply put, when the image of the beast is formed, it will introduce false worship, right? Revelation 13, 15 that if you would not worship, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So that you call false worship because it says that if you will not worship, you'll be killed. So false worship, the image of the beast. So publicly speaking, looking at the chart, the image of the beast, when does the image of the beast come? After the close of probation or before the close of probation? Before, what does the prophet say? We showed from the Bible the image must come before. She says, the Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed when? Before probation closes. Then we see that publicly. Publicly we can see this. And then she says, for it is to be the great test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. So you tell me then, what does the image of the beast um, decide based on that quotation what does it decide help me now if I say or if God says that today your eternal destiny is decided question tomorrow can I change no. so what do you call that when, when, I'm, when, I can't, when I can't change what do you call that 
close of probation. So tell me, when does probation commences or starts to close? At the image of the peace, probation starts closing there, but then at climax at what we call the gender close. Why we call it the gender close? It's because individually people's probations are closing, leading up to the last person who chooses the seal of God or the mark of the peace. Sunday worship or true Sabbath worship. And when that last person makes up their mind, great controversy says the angel ascends up to heaven. And he announces to Jesus that his, the sealing angel announces to Jesus his work on the earth is accomplished. It's done. She says when the angel announces that, Jesus throws down the censer and he says it is done. And then he pronounces those solemn words, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. So what I'm saying is the image of the peace starts the close of probation. But the gender close of probation is when the last person makes up their mind. So probation don't close at the close of probation. Probation starts closing where? It starts closing at the image of the beast. This is when it starts closing. And you don't prepare for the test then on the day of the test. You prepare before the test. Now I want to show you we're surrounded. We're surrounded. Come with me to Revelation 13. Revelation 13 chapter. Let me show you a picture. Look at this picture nicely. Who do you see on that picture? So, okay, you might not know. See, some people don't know who's that woman. You're looking, who's that woman? <laughs> I never ever, I don't even know that woman. Now, let me tell you who's that woman. This is Kamala Harris. Who is Kamala Harris? She's the Vice President today of the United States of America. Who is she? She is now running for presidency. She is running for president. Joe Biden, if you don't know, after his debate, he was, that debate was horrible for him. And many Democrats said to Biden, drop out. And Biden said, I'm not dropping out. Someone actually convinced him, you need to drop out. You can't run for presidency. You're going to cause us to lose. So he dropped out. After he fought against it, he said, I'm not dropping out. I don't care who says what. He eventually dropped out. Now, the new peak is Kamala Harris. That's the new peak now. She's running for president. The presidency now is between Kamala Harris, Democrat, and Donald Trump. Friends, we are surrounded. Let me tell you, we are surrounded. Can I say something, right? Yeah. What's the, what's the that, 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 in this study, that's where I want to go. So you need to watch our last prophecy update. We spent most of that prophecy update dealing with Trump. The recent one we just done, Trump, Project 2025. Then we touch briefly on Kamala Harris. Today, we want to go deeper to show you, I don't care who wins. I don't care if it's Trump, Sunday laws come in. I don't care if it's Kamala Harris, the image of the peace will be formed. I don't care which way we're going, it's coming. It's coming. Friends, we don't have much time left. What's the thing that starts the closing of probation? Image of the beast. We have a chart pointing out every way mark on our heavenly journey, and we ought to guess at nothing. Revelation, the 13th chapter. Speaking about America in verse 11, it's speaking about America in verse 11, I'm not going to read verse 11, but it's you speaking about the United States of America. Now, what I want us to see publicly, the events in connection with what? The close of probation. So help me, when does our probation start to close? Image of the peace. What I want to look at, what leads up to the formation or the union of church and state. What leads to the formation of the image of the peace that gives birth to the mark of the peace. I want to look at, let me tell you this. I'm going to read a verse now. The Bible is going to tell us what leads to the image of the peace. I'm going to read it right now. Let me say this. There are three things that can lead to the formation of the image. The Bible mentions one, but when you study this one thing, it gives birth to three things. One thing that gives birth to three things. The Bible mentions one word. You study that word and you come up with three different things that lead to the formation of the image of the peace. 
which is our final test, Church and State Union. Now, I want us to see what are these three events or these three things. I'm saying three. The Bible says one, but when you study this one, you'll see three. Because she says we must understand the events in connection with the close of probation and, and we must study the work of what? Preparation. Now, whose life are we studying? Noah. Revelations chapter 13. Are we there? Verse 11. Did I say 11? No, no, no. Verse 13. Revelations 13, verse 13. It says, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh, keyword, fire come down from heaven in the earth in the sight of men. Pause there, pause there, pause there. What does he make to come down? Now, I want you, we start, now look, it says what? Fire. Now, what's the purpose of this fire? What's the purpose of the fire? Look at verse 14. Yes, it's to deceive. It's to deceive, but yes, but what's the end goal? Look at verse 14. It says, and deceiver, that's true, the fire is to deceive. To deceive, but it has an end goal. It says, and to deceive them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles. Now, what's the purpose of this deception of these miracles, so to speak? It says, which had power to do in the sight of the peace, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had a wound by the sword and did love. Question. Why did the fire come down? It was that they might tell the world to make a what? To make an image. So what's the purpose of the fire? To cause them to do what? To make an image. Image of the beast. So what, what leads up to the image of the beast? Fire, fire, fire. Let's use pious, intelligent, and studious. We, 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 we study these, these evening Bible, the, the Bible study clauses. So what leads to the image of the beast? So let me ask you, can the fire, whatever it is, be the event that, lead, that whatever they are, whatever it is, that indicate to me that the image is about to be formed or that probation is about to start closing? Yes. yes. So what should we study then, Brother Felix? What should I study then? The fire. What is the fire? That's my question. Let's put that down. Let's put, I, I want three things. I want three things. I, I'll take that. So one, a count, we studied that in the school of the loud cry. We done a old, a old section dealing with a counterfeit letter rain. A counterfeit letter rain. So a counterfeit, you said, counterfeit what? Counterfeit, counterfeit spirit or a counterfeit letter rain. So give me a Bible for, your, for this. Give me Bible for this. All right, let me help you. Mark it down. Acts chapter 2. The day of Pentecost when the Spirit descended. How did the Spirit descend? In what element did the Spirit descend upon them? Cloven tongues of fire. So the Holy Spirit is synonymous with what? Fire. But let me ask you, this fire, is this the, the Holy Spirit or is this for deception? So you call this a counterfeit Holy Spirit, a counterfeit lettering, a counterfeit revival. You can, in GC 464, she says that before the outpouring of the Spirit, before a genuine revival amongst God's people, before the loud cry, she says Satan in GC 464, great controversy, will actually cause a counterfeit revival just before the genuine comes. So there must be a counterfeit revival or a counterfeit Holy Spirit. Are you following? That will give birth to what will this counterfeit or this fire counterfeit that Holy Spirit counterfeit letter rain, counterfeit revival. What will it give birth to? It'll give birth to what? The image of the beast. The image of the beast. Give me another, another thing, fire. Huh? Okay, yeah, that is true. There is, there will be a financial crisis. Okay, civil war, that is 100% true. There must be a civil war. That is true. Sabbath, let me tell you something, friends. Oh, don't, don't tempt me to jump out of this presentation. They, let me not tell you. Let me not tell you. 
We got video clips where they're talking about the assassination of Trump. Mm. Not talking about what happened to him before it even happened. A, a, a video clips of talking about putting a bullet in him. And new information just came out now recently. There's going to be another assassination attempt on his life. Mm. They actually, literally, it's all it's on, before the 11th, before November, I think the elections are somewhere there. They said there's going to be another attempt on his life. But not there now. Come back here. Fire. 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 We got that, brother. <laughs> we got that, brother. We got false revival there. Fire. Think fire. Fire in the Bible. I'm asking, where? Fire in the Bible? No. No. We, sorry? Yeah, oh, yes, the, the Holy Spirit, yes. Friends, there's two more. You're, you're, you're not, okay. Because of the sin, God brought down fire. Homosexuality. Homosexuality. Because of homosexuality, God brought down fire. So what must we see that will give birth to the image of the beast? Homosexuality. More on fire. More on fire. Everything the Bible says about fire. That's Genesis 19. Elijah. Elijah. Now tell me where with Elijah there was fire. The prophets of Baal. Where else was Elijah and fire? That second, that's prophets of Baal, 1 Kings 18, with Elijah on, on, on Mount Carmel, with the false prophets of Baal that ate at Jezebel's table. Where, where else with Elijah and fire? 2 Kings chapter 1. When Ahab sent the soldiers to take Elijah, and Elijah said, if I'm a man of God, 50 came for him. He says, if I'm a man of God, you are sitting on a wall and they came for him. If I'm a man of God, the heavens will open up now and fire will destroy you all. And as he said those words, the heavens opened up, fire came and destroyed him. The next 50 came. Elijah said, if I'm a man of God, the heavens will open and fire, boom, killed him. Next 50 came, this captain was intelligent. He fell down before Elijah. And he says, spare my life. He, he said, for, spare my life. Please spare my life. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to Elijah. Go with him. Go to Ahab. If he came like the other's presumptions, Elijah would have said, open up heavens. He would have been consumed. But fire. Where do we see fire? With Elijah. With Elijah. Now, uh, um, how do I put this? Come with me in your Bible to Kings. Let's go there to Kings. First Kings 18. Did I say, what did I say? First Kings 18. I'm just trying to look where, all right, let's go to 1 Kings 18. I'm in 2 Kings, I'm looking for a verse there, but it's fine. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18. Do we have the mic? Can someone read for me? 1 Kings chapter 18. I want you to read verse 19. Anyone? 1 Kings 18 verse 19. And then also verse... 38. We ready? Yes. Okay. Is it on? Yes. Yes. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, mm. and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. Mm. Now, where were they eating at whose table? Jezebel's table. Now, con now jump down to verse, what verse did I say? 38. 38. What happens when Elijah meets them on Mount Carmel? Because they have, they, there's false worship taking place there. They, false worship versus true worship. And then God sends down fire. Verse 38. 
Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust mm. and leaked mm. up the water that was in the trench. Mm. Amen. So when did God send down fire? When it was a battle between what? True worship and false worship. The prophets of Baal and then Elijah was having true worship and God sent down fire. Now, can you tell me who was Elijah's enemy when God sent down fire? He had, he had, he had enemies and mentions them. One, one of them, so let's put here false worship or verse true worship, there was a pattern. Now, who, who was his enemies? It was Jezebel, who else? The false prophets, the false prophets, false prophets of Baal, and who was, who was, the, who was over, who, who, had, who was the state? Ahab. So can you see how many, how many, uh, how many people he was against, how many groups of people was he against? Three. Jezebel, the false prophets, and then the king, so to speak. Who was the most powerful out of these three? I'm saying who, had, who was controlling the three? Jezebel. It was actually Jezebel that was controlling. She was the, 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 the Jezebel. In the end times, how many powers is God's people against Babylon? How many divisions Babylon is divided into? It's three. It's the mother of harlots, the uh, daughters, the false prophets, the daughters are called the false prophets, and it's the kings of the earth. So the same three powers that Elijah was against, we're going to be against. Same three powers. What, did, what does the Bible call Jezebel? Does anybody know what does the Bible call Jezebel? Come with me to 2 Kings 9. 2 Kings 9. Verse 22. Jehu was speaking to Jehu was speaking to Jezebel's son. And I want you to see when Jehu was speaking to Jezebel's son, what does he call his mother? Listen to what it says here in 2 Kings 9, verse 22. And it came to pass when Jerum saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the wardens of, the, of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. What did he call Jezebel? Wardens. War. So, who in Revelation is called a war? Babylon. Revelation chapter 18, Babylon. Chapter 17, the mother of all harlots. So, what I'm saying is before we come to the National Sunday Lord, the image of the peace, what we must see, a counterfeit revival that will give birth to the image of the peace. We must see homosexuality. Now you might say, but homosexuality is the opposite of the image exactly. The more homosexuality is put in the front, the more Christians are going to war against it until they're going to try and control the state to enforce their decrees. So homosexuality will be causing the pendulum because homosexuality is opposite of Christianity until it causes the pendulum to swing to the opposite extreme where the church says enough is enough. We're now forcing our beliefs upon everyone. And then as we are nearing it, we must see this threefold union as we are nearing the image of the peace this threefold union that's going to give birth to this image. Babylon, threefold union, apostates, uh, Protestants, the Roman Catholic Church, and the kings of the world. We must see a union. But who was the, the brains of this union? Jezebel. So we must see a Jezebel. As we are nearing the image of the beast, we must see a Jezebel. We must see a Jezebel. First, what must we first see? A what? Counterfeit what? Revival. A counterfeit revival. Who is this man? Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, with your help and God's grace, the great revival of America begins on November 5th, 2024. We'll be able to do it because you're the people we want to hear from, the pastors and the ministers and the rabbis. The people in this room are the people we want to hear from, and they have to have a political voice. You know, if you think about it, you have men, you have women, and you have religion. If you look at it, you have more than the men, you have more than the women. You have such power, but you really, you weren't allowed to use that power. 
and you're now allowed to use it. I get in there, you're going to be using that power at a level that you've never used it before. Pause there. Pause there. What did Trump say is coming if he gets elected? Revival. And then he says to the Christians, they're going to have what? Power such as they've never had before. Revival, actually revival. And then after the revival, counterfeit, counterfeit fire, then the verse 15 says he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Exact, almost he's borrowing Bible language. One thing I forgot with the fire, one thing I forgot is Job. With the fire and Job. Let me ask you this, when the fire came down, the world one came and destroyed all his things. When all those calamities were happening, what did, what did the servants of Job say it was? They said it was, God sent the fire. God sent the world one. It was an act of God. What do they call today as acts of God? What do they call today as acts of God? Climate change. So another thing that's going to give birth to the Sunday law, if we can put number four, is climate change. Climate change. Because there's, there's world one that fire everything. They said, no, these are acts of God. Today they call that climate change. Climate change. So we can see Trump counterfeit revival. Counterfeit revival, talking about a counterfeit revival. We can put a tick there. Coming back, coming back, I want you to see who is Kamala Harris, or at least what does she say that she belongs to a denomination. It says Harris brings Baptist interfaith roots to Democrat ticket. What, what, what denomination? Baptist. Baptist. Now watch this. Some Southern Baptist pastors or calling Kamala Harris Jezebel. What do they mean? What do they mean? When was this? Do I, have my I never put my day chair. This day was the other day. Look again, it says, this, uh, Southern Baptist pastors compare what? Kamala Harris to Bible's queen who? Jezebel. Jezebel. I wonder if we've seen a Jezebel. Hey, 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 hey. Where she's claiming she's Baptist, but she's also running for president. Well, that's church and state union. Now I want you to see what else is gonna lead to what else is gonna lead to the Sunday law. So we can see a Jezebel, a union, church and state, so to speak. We're not finished, we're not finished with that. We're coming back. Homosexuality. Homosexuality. This was the Olympics. The Olympics opening ceremony. We covered this in our last prophecy update. This year was the Olympics opening ceremony. All of that that you see there. Let me tell you something. Some places in the world, many a time you can look at an individual, you might literally think this is a woman and it's a man. See that none of those there are women. They all dress like women. All men. All men. Every, this year was the opening ceremony of the Olympics. Men dressing as women. This is it. Now look carefully what were they actually trying to portray. Let me zoom out this picture. Let me zoom it out. Let me zoom it out. What were they trying to portray? The Lost Supper. But the Lost Supper, there were only men there. But for, for them, homosexuals. This is blasphemy. This is blasphemy. I wonder, someone says, how will this, this homosexual, um, how will this lead to the Sunday law? I want you to see this. Do you know that Elon, does anybody know Elon Musk? Elon Musk is not a Christian. He claims to be an atheist. But listen to this. How even atheists are speaking. Listen to this. Elon Musk calls for Christians to stand up against Olympic show. When was this? 28 July 2024. So even eight years are saying, what, the, what? This is blasphemy, it shouldn't be done. Even eight years now have been persuaded. See, Satan plays on both sides. To get even the eight years now to profess Christianity, he will do that. And it will be a false Christianity. Even the Muslims, it says July 30, 2024, 
It says, Muslim leaders condemn disgraceful Olympic scene. It offended us as much as them. Even Muslims are saying, that's an offense to us. Christianity should not be mocked like that. Olympics, this has Muslims view. It says, Olympic opening ceremony, Christians should exercise their right of outrage. So Muslim says, you'll need to stand up and fight for Christianity. Again, it says here, this is Turkey's Egregon. Uh, uh, it says Turkey's president to call Pope on immorality committed against Christian world at Paris Olympics. Are oh, you seeing what's happening to the Muslim ones, the atheists? How are they viewed? They're all rising up Muslims, atheists, no matter who they are. No matter what they believe, they're all saying this is an offense to Christianity and it should never happen. Are oh, you seeing how Satan is playing this thing? He's, he, friends, let me tell you, that was strategic what the Olympics done. Strategically. To actually get sympathy towards Christianity and move the world towards Christianity. Do you know who's this man? Richard Dawkins. This is the most famous atheist in the world today. He's actually the leading, leading atheist, so-called scientist uh, in, 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 in this theory of evolution. This is the, they call him the greatest atheist. He's, he actually teaches this, 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 this idea. Now I want you to see what he has to say. Listen to what he has to say. Not so much on the Olympics, just on Christianity. I'm really horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we, we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols. And um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down uh, and I, I'm happy with that but I would not be happy if um, for example we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian I think it would matter if we certainly if we substituted any alternative religion Now that friends, was truly are you hearing what Richard Dawkins is saying? This man, this man, I'm telling you, amongst the atheists is well known. Amongst the world is well known. Because he's like, he, he fights against all religions. But what does he call himself? A cultural Christian. Interesting. Interesting. He says he doesn't want the churches to close down. He doesn't want the cathedrals to close. Even atheists have a sympathy towards Christianity but not the true Christianity, not the true Christianity. So homosexuality, is it causing Christians to stand up? And even Muslims, no matter who atheists, causing them to stand up, saying Christians must fight against this thing. Now, what about climate change? What about climate change? I want us to look at this. It says here, remarks by Vice President Harris Combating what? Climate change and building a clean energy economy. So what does, what does Harris want to fight against? Climate change. It says here, Harris, climate record draws young voters and Trump attacks. So she's a strong advocate for what? Climate change. Climate change. Yes, why? Kamala Harris, yes, where Kamala Harris stands on what? Climate change. Now listen to what it says. She pursued polluters as attorney general in California and later staked out poll positions as senator, including sponsorship of what? The Green New Deal. So Kamala Harris is fully supporting the what? Yeah, climate change, but it mentioned something. Green New Deal. So she's a strong advocate of the Green New Deal. Green New Deal. Again, I want you to see what she had to say about this issue of climate change. Listen to what she had to say. She talked about how climate anxiety was causing many young people to reconsider whether or not they would actually have children. Here's the video that's resurfaced. Have a listen. I've heard young leaders talk with me about a, a term they've coined called climate anxiety. Period. 
right? Which is fear of, of, of the future and the unknown of whether it makes sense for you to even think about having children. Now, Elon Musk has uh, retweeted that video and said the natural extension of her philosophy would be a de facto holocaust for all of humanity. It's a frightening thought. To so she believes that can be an extinction if there's no, if we do not deal with climate change, there will be an extinction. Now listen to what it says, where Kamala Harris stands on the Green New Deal and the climate initiatives. Harris previously indicated she would make the climate crisis a top priority. So what is her top priority? Climate change, climate change. Now, what is this Green New Deal? Let's see what it is. It says hidden Pope Francis is encyclical could pave the way for what? The Green New Deal. What, what is linked to the Green New Deal? With this climate change, this new deal, now it's called the Green New Deal. So this Green New Deal, green has to do with the climate, new meaning it doesn't exist, we're gonna introduce it, it's a deal. In other words, this deal will actually help, the econ help climate and our economy. What, what, what is it? It says, we must also celebrate rest, especially from buying and selling by returning to a focus on keeping the Sabbath. What, what is linked to the Green New Deal? You stop buying and selling on Sunday. That's the Green New Deal. You stop buying and selling on the Sunday. Now, I wonder if that sounds like Revelations 15, 16, and 17. Revelations 13, 15, 16, and 17. No buy, no sell. No buy, no sell. It's so rest on the Sabbath. Now, it says, I, I cover that, cover that, skip that. This year was July 25th, 2024. The UN chief appeals for global action to tackle deadly extreme heat. The 25th of the 7th, July, that one far off, a couple of days back. What did the UN chief says, the United Nations chief says, we must tackle climate change. We must tackle it. Now, he goes through this and he explains why. I'm gonna skip that, but who does the UN chief see as the, has the solution for climate change? It says the UN chief hails pa papal encyclical, spotlighting climate change as a critical moral issue. So who does the UN chief look at? What document is he looking at as the solution for climate change? The Pope's encyclical, Laudato Si. UN chief welcomes encyclical by Pope Francis calling swift action on climate change. What does Laudato Si call for? What does Laudato Si call for? Sunday rest. It calls for Sunday rest, the mark of the beast. Friends, can you see how close we are? Now, let us briefly look at the experience quickly. Let us briefly, quickly look at the experience of Noah. Briefly. Friends, are we seeing that Trump mentioned that when he comes into office, there's going to be a revival? Yes. Are we seeing homosexuality, but also the pushbacks of Christians, Islams, even atheists? Yes. And then Harris has been called what? Jezebel. And what is she strongly pushing for? What is she strongly advocating? Climate change. Climate change. Now this, I'm only looking at Harris. I've covered Trump before. So Trump, we've covered him many times. Project 2025 and so forth. Look at the prophecy updates. But now, I'm looking at, we are looking at Harris. If whether Harris comes, whether Trump comes, a Sunday law is imminent. It's coming no matter who wins this election. It is coming. It is coming. Come on in your Bible. Let us briefly look at the experience quickly of Noah, Genesis. Come with me to the book of Genesis. We are going to Genesis. Genesis. Genesis chapter six. Genesis chapter six. What experience did Noah have? Righteousness. What experience should we have? The prophet says that the time of test is just upon us. Is the time of test just upon us? Yes. What will prepare us for the test? She says, Christ, our righteousness. This is going to prepare us for the test. Genesis chapter six. What I want us to do is look at Noah's experience. Noah had an experience of righteousness by faith. 
Hebrews 11 verse 7 tells us that Noah became an heir of the righteousness which is by faith. That's Hebrews 11 7. So Noah had this experience of righteousness by faith. I want us to see how did Noah have this experience. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis the 6th chapter. I want us to see verse 9. Genesis 6 verse 9. Are we there? It says in Genesis the 6th chapter verse 9. It says, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Did Noah walk with God? Yes. Enoch was not the only one that walked with God. The Bible says that Noah walked with God. He was just and a perfect man. Now I want you to see, what does the Bible tell me caused Noah to be just and to be perfect? There was something that caused Noah to be just and perfect and caused him to walk with God. It was something God gave him that caused him to have this experience. It's in verse 8, the previous verse. It says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then it says that he was just and perfect. What caused Noah to be just and perfect? The grace that he found from God. The grace that he found from God. So I want you to reason with me. If I'm going to be just and perfect like Noah, what do I need that Noah had? I need grace. I need grace. One of the things that I need, I, I would say, yeah, I need grace. The experience of Noah. The experience of Noah, which should be our experience. Noah had what? Grace. Grace. Grace, grace. We are told in Titus that the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and that we should live soberly and righteously in this present world. So grace is God's power to live soberly and to live righteously in this present world. Now my question is, how do I obtain this grace? Because it says, because Noah, why was Noah perfect? Why was Noah just? Why was Noah walking with God? The previous verse says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So if I'm going to walk with God, if I'm going to be just and upright and perfect, I need to find the grace of God in my life. But how do I get this grace? How do I get this grace that can cause me to have this experience of Noah? There's two ways of getting this grace. Volume 1 of the Testimonies of the, for the Church 158, she says there is a remedy for the sin-sick soul. And that remedy is in Jesus, precious Savior. His grace is sufficient for the weakest, and the strongest must also have his grace or perish. I saw how this grace could be obtained. Go to your closet and plead with God Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Be in earnest, be sincere. Fervent prayer, fail it much. Jacob-like wrestling prayer. Do not leave your closet till you feel strong in God. Then you must watch and pray. And these evil perceptions will be kept under and the grace of God will appear in your life. How do I get this grace of God? How do I get this grace of God? What does she say? I must plead. Plead in my closet. Plead in my closet. That's how I get it. That's how I get it. I believe Noah was pleading. And that's how he got it. So pleading in your closet is prayer. I don't pray once a day. No. I need to be consistent in prayer. I need to be consistent in prayer and do not leave, she says, until you feel strong in God. Do not leave. Second witness, how do I get the grace of God? Amazing Grace 307. So one is pray, but don't only pray. He who does nothing but praise will soon cease to pray. Listen to what she says. Many are longing to grow in grace. They pray over the matter and are surprised that their prayers are not answered. The master has given them a work to do whereby they shall grow. Of what value is it to pray when there is a need of work? 
The question is, are they seeking to save souls for whom Christ died? Spiritual growth depends upon giving to others the light God has given you. Can you see what inspiration is saying? Don't just pray, Lord, I want grace. She says you can pray and pray and you'll receive no grace. God has given you a work to do. And until you do that work, you'll stay weak. It's only as you engage in some sort of work that you will grow in grace. We must engage in soul saving. Must engage in soul saving. Some people seek feeble dying spiritually. Why? They're not helping someone else. So if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna have this grace, plead in my closet, but then also work for salvation of souls. Work for souls. Work for souls. So Noah had grace that caused him to have this experience. But Noah's experience was also based on prophecy. Why? Noah was preaching based on Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, that there was only 120 years of probation. Noah, let me tell you something. When Noah was building the ark, Noah never asked them, is probation going to close? Noah never debated them. I think in 120 years, probation is going to close. Noah, never did. Noah told them it's a fact, whether they believed it or not. And we're telling you a fact, plus minus 2025, 20, crisis comes. And let me tell you, it was God's mercy the crisis could have broke this year. We could, a civil war could have already been finished in America. I don't believe that the next civil war spoken about is going to be months. It will be a brief period of time. Because let me tell you, back then, civil war, it could happen a bit longer. Men never have the weapons they now have. Ordinary citizens got AK-47s. The damage that can be done in one week, with inside, just inside of America, we're going to talk about what's coming here to South Africa. So, but I'm telling you, there's a great call for killing. I'm telling you, there's a call for slaughtering. Hey, the man literally came out and said, we must kill. There must be a revolution now in South Africa. I'm telling you, friends, what we, we're nearing home. We are nearing home. So I want you to see this. Not only did Noah preach a message, or not only did Noah find grace, we have to link with this grace. We must have a message of prophecy. Listen to what it says. Um, Christ triumphant, 39. He sent his angel to Noah to tell him what his purpose was in regard to the inhabitants of the world. So how did Noah, what, how did Noah know what's going to happen in the world? An angel came to Noah and told him that this is going to happen. God is planning to destroy this world by a flood. The faithful preacher of righteousness, Noah, declared the message to the inhabitants that 120 years would be the end of their probation. Did Noah tell them exactly how much time they have left? Now, we can't give exact dates, specific dates, but we can say based on the prophecy, we got a few months left. We don't have much time left. So, when we talk about the experience of Noah, Noah, yes, he found grace, but he was preaching a message of imminent destruction if you do not repent. Noah told him, get into the ark. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There were people who assisted Noah in building the ark. Carpenters who helped him in the preparation of that ark. But as the years lapsed and they saw no crisis, no gathering storm, there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. Back then, there wasn't even, people didn't know what's a cloud. And they saw Noah, 80 years is gone, we're helping you build this boat. And there's not even a cloud in the sky, at least to prove what you're saying is right. 90 years, Noah, we here, and still nothing. And I'm sure when it got to 90 years, some of his competitors left him, those who were helping him. Noah, it was good knowing you, but hey, unfortunately, your message seems not to be true. And I'm sure it came to 110 years, and the other carpenters looked, Noah, we tried to hang on a little longer than our fellow workers, but we can see there's not even a cloud. There's no sign that what you're saying is true. And they turned around and they walked away right on the borders of the crisis. They walked away. There was some attraction that pulled them away. I want you to see what the prophet says. Listen to what she says. She says, hmm, where is it? There's it. 
She says, Christ triumphant, page 95. There are those who will be like the men and women who help to build the ark. They hear the truth. They have every advantage to become the, peop the people of moral worth, yet they will not choose the good society, but the corrupt. If there's an influence that is not heavenly, they will gather to their side and unite with them. And although they act a part in preparation of the truth that is to fit a people to stand in the day of the Lord, they will perish in the general ruin like Noah's carpenters who helped build the ark. God help you that you may not be of that class. Imagine you help assist in preparing outpost centers, help preparing for the crisis, yet your own soul is lost. Your own soul is lost. In the days of Noah, there were men like that who assisted in building an ark, assisted in, in preparing that outpost center, but they went out into the world and they perished in the general ruin. Perish in the general ruin. Friends, let me tell you something. Noah was looked upon as a deluded fanatic when you're telling the people that, I man, the world can never end. Noah, are you sure? God's going to destroy everyone with a flood. Mm -mm, not possible. Let me tell you something. When the rain started coming, do you know those people begged to hear one more message of mercy? They just wished for one more hour of probation. But it was, it was too late. It was too late. It was too late. Friends, let me tell you what they done. When the, when the water started coming, inspiration says they tied themselves to huge beasts. Some of the antediluvians, they looked at these animals, the animals were frantic, and there were some big animals back then. They went and they tied them and their children onto these animals, knowing these animals are gonna run for higher ground. And they, indeed they ran for higher ground. Some were banging onto the ark. Some grabbed onto the ark, they were clinging, holding on. She says the water swept them away, or some, some, some plank or tree came and knocked them, but their grip lost hold of the grip, they drowned. The people that grabbed onto the animals, that even Lucifer himself, when God, friends, I'm telling you, if you just had a vision, God showed you that, you yourself would tremble. When you would see the water coming down, you yourself, she, inspiration says, Satan trembled for his own existence. For the first time, he saw the wrath of God demonstrated. And he trembled for his existence. Inspiration says the animals ran to higher ground, but she says, spot of the spot, the water just kept rising, kept rising. And every high peak of the high peak was gone. And she says, until the last group of people were standing on the highest point of planet Earth, squashed up together as they see a, 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 a shoreless ocean around them. And there's thick clouds above you. Do you know how their hearts were racing? Their hearts were trembling, wishing. Now the prophet takes us back and helps us to see what was in their minds, friends, as the water was just rising and rising. Look at, what she, look at the picture she paints here. She says, from the highest peaks, men looked abroad upon a shoreless ocean. The solemn warnings of God's servant no longer seemed a subject for ridicule and scorning. How these doomed sinners longed for opportunities which they had slighted. How they pleaded for one hour's probation, one more privilege of mercy, one call from the lips of Noah, but the sweet voice of mercy was no more to be heard by them. Friends, are you seeing this? They, cried, they, they begged, pleaded, whilst they saw the waters coming up, they were on the last point, the last point they were on. And there was no more land, and they begged for one more opportunity. That's what happens to the human soul, the human mind. It's only when they're in trouble, then they want to turn, Lord, help me. But this time, mercy's voice would no longer be heard. They had heard that voice too many times, and this time God would not respond. This time he will not respond. She says the avenging waters swept over the lost retreats and the despisers of, God's, of God perished in the black depths. Friends, let me tell you, how many people were only caught into that ark? Eight including Noah. Based on 2 Peter, eight including Noah. Eight including Noah. Let me tell you something. Do you know who was the greatest opposers to messages, the message of Noah? The people, not, not, not directly, is, is, but his own church brethren, so to speak. 
There is own people who claim to be worshiping the true God. Others said we not even cared about God. But those who profess to be worshiping the true God said this man's deluded. He's a fanatic. This will never happen. The world cannot end. Probation cannot close in the next few months. Not possible. Plus minus 2025, nothing like that. We got many more years in this world. Is that so? In a little while, we'll see. In a little while, we'll see. Based on the evidence, the evidence is stacked upon evidence that this is the generation. This is the generation. Now, I want you to see the greatest opponents to Noah. She says here, yeah, the men of that generation were not all in the fullest exception of the term idolaters. Many profess to be worshippers of God. This class, the worshippers of God, were foremost in rejecting the preaching of Noah. Which people? Those who profess to be worshippers of God. Do you know you can go to the General Seventh Adventist Church, I don't care, majority of them, and you can go in there and ask the minister, ask the elders, do, is the world about to end very shortly? Is the Sunday law coming? They tell you what? There's no Sunday law and no pipeline. There's no Sunday law in the pipe. Who's telling you there's a Sunday law in the pipeline? Who's? There's no, there's, that's not, it's not going to happen. Not now. Yes, it will happen, but not now. There's no signs that it's coming now. Let me tell you something. Those are dumb dogs that will not bark. They are dumb dogs. God calls them dumb dogs. I'm not, you don't, I never make that up. That's Isaiah. Isaiah, God says these dumb dogs that would not bark. She says, well, be, Ellen right now picks that up. She says, these dumb dogs that would not bark will be the first ones who feel the vengeance of an offended God. First ones. When God's rod comes, they will receive it first. Our own brethren, who will tell you there's no coming crisis. And even amongst prison truthers, they'll tell you, no, it's not imminent. Yes, it's coming, but not, not, not plus minus 2025. Now, let's come here. She says, now, let me tell, tell you something. You know another thing, why many people, many people believe Noah's message to be true. Many believed it to be true. But let me tell you what stopped them. Does anybody know what stopped them from accepting his message? Something stopped them from accepting his message. They believe what he's saying is true. They, they never believe he's a deluded fanatic. They believed what he's preaching is true. But they did not accept the message. Do you know why? They were afraid of ridicule afraid of ridicule we are told that peter peter the apostle peter peter the disciple she says inspiration says peter was willing to fight if he had to for his lord but when the finger of scorn was pointed to him she says he became a coward she says some men are willing to fight but as soon as the finger of scorn is pointed to them they can denounce their faith they will denounce their faith because they don't want to be ridiculed and scorned they cannot handle that Listen to what the prophet says. Many at first appeared to receive the warning, yet they did not turn to God with true repentance. They were unwilling to renounce their sins, and God forbid that we hold on to sin as probation is about to close. During the time that elapsed before the coming of the flood, their faith was tested and they failed to endure the trial. Overcome by the prevailing unbelief, they finally joined their former associates in rejecting the solemn message. Some were deeply convicted and would, have, and would have heeded the words of warning. But there were so many to jest and ridicule that they partook of the same spirit, resisted the invitations of mercy, and were soon amongst the boldest and most defiant of scoffers. Friends, let me tell you, let me tell you something. When you're standing alone, you go to a church, many people, I or your present truth, when, when, when the finger of scorn is turned to you, I don't know, I'm telling you, I've, I've been in a mess where people were growling at present truth. Yeah. Growling. Let me tell you, now God help is, is in the process of refining, but the more, when I was in the world and I'm coming over and God's still refining, the more you growl, then the more I, I show my colors. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. You growl, I show my colors more. Yeah. I, there's something, God is still working, but some people placed in that environment, I would see people buckle. They will buckle. They can't handle the pressure when people are speaking downfully upon present truth. When they're making it look as fanaticism, we almost want to shrink in our seats and hide, I'm not present truth. Or we'll also draw our comments to blend in with them. Smile with, 
No, beloved. In the days of Noah, why did they not embrace their message? Ridicule and scorn. They don't want to embrace the message. If I do, I'm going to be mocked and scorned at. Let me not show, uh, Noah, your message is a delusion. It's a delusion. I'm going to skip that. Time is gone. Time is gone. Let's close. Let's close. What to the people? You know what? Let's leave that. Let's come to Genesis. Let's come to Genesis. We wanted to, let's just come to Genesis. So Noah had grace. Noah understood the times because he preached a, a specific probation is going to close. What else? I want us to see in Genesis chapter 6. Verse 21. I want to close now. Genesis 6, 21. It says, And take, God says to Noah, And take thou, And take thou unto the old food that is eaten, And thou shalt gather it to thee, And it shall be for food for thee and for them. Where was Noah to take this food? Into the ark. Remember God says in verse 14, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. So Noah made an ark. Noah was told to make a what? A ark, and what must he have inside the ark? Based on this verse 21, what must he have inside the ark? So it's an ark plus what? Food. Ark plus food. Now I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Are we going to face a storm? A, not a, a literal storm, but a spiritual storm. Are we going to, a spiritual storm, a physical storm, are we going to come to a time where we cannot buy or sell? Yes. So should we also have an ark, so to speak, and food inside that ark? Yes. What will be the ark today? Country living, land. Country living. And what must we have in, when we're in the country, what must we be growing? Our own food. Now, okay, before probation closes, remember, before probation closes, we'll study what you will study this, but before probation closes, the church and the state have to enforce Sunday worship. When Sunday worship is enforced by law, meaning South Africa is going to enforce everyone to go to church on Sunday. When you see that, then you know that probation now is closing. But that is not, it's coming, we're almost there. So once we get to that, probation is now closing. So that's, that's the last sign we are to see. So country living, would you agree with me? Country living. Now, what I wanted to do, I'm not going to do it now. We're going to start this quotation. Many people get confused. I'm not going to even read it. But this quotation seems to say you wait for the Sunday law and then you go to the country. Another time we'll deal with this quotation. But I don't want to deal with it now. The prophet says again and again the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the city into the country. What must we do in the country where they can raise their own provision? For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. So where should we be, where should we be in the country and doing what? Growing our own food. Why are times coming where we cannot buy and sell? So this was a part. Now let me ask you this. What if Noah said, I'm only going to preach? Now that's another aspect. Second Peter says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So he was an evangelist. He was an evangelist. So it's, it's telling us what I should be. But nonetheless, back to this issue of ark. What if Noah said, I'm only going to preach the message of a flood. I'm not going to prepare the ark and gather food. What would have happened to Noah? He would have drowned. There are seven day adventists who teach or believe that God's going to send ravens to my door. I'm not leaving the city. God's sending ravens to my door to feed me. That God's going to send, like how he fed Elijah, he'll send an angel to my door. Now, is that biblical? Is that biblical? That how can we go against God's command, get out of the city and prepare an ark, so to speak? We say, I'm going to go against it and God's going to bless me. You call that presumption. Whenever you claim the, the blessings of God and you don't comply with the condition, get out of the city, not remain in the city. Now, will God send ravens to feed us? Will God send food for us? But uh, will God send food for us during... Um, the little time of trouble? Where must we be in little time of trouble? In the country. It's when we flee to the mountains, God will, our bread and water will be sure. We are told that in early writings 56. Not during the little time of trouble when the Sunday law is in force. There we must be inside 
the country growing our own food. That's what the prophet says. And then she says, yeah, in harmony with the light given me, I am urging our people to come out of the great census of, of population. Those who remain in them, the cities, unnecessarily do so at the peril of their soul salvation. At the peril of their soul salvation. Very clear, friends. Very, very clear. So, let's conclude. There's so much. Let me just finish here. We're still in Genesis 6, verse 22. Let's close. It says, Thus, thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. Then look at the next verse. It says, Noah done everything that God commanded him. Look at the next verse, 7 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, we are talking about righteousness by faith. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. I want to ask you a question. Before Noah was declared to be righteous, what did verse 22 say Noah did? All that God commanded him. So what is righteousness by faith? How does righteousness by faith look? Yes, it's first God giving me grace. He forgives me. He cleanses me. He empowers me. Once he empowers me now, what does that look like going forward? I do all that God commands me. When I do that, that is what righteousness by faith demonstrated. It's a man doing all what God says. A woman doing all what God says. That is righteousness by faith. Actually, in Christ's object lessons, I think it's 312, if I'm not mistaken, she says that righteousness is right doing. What is righteousness? Right doing. I can't be praying a hundred times, Lord, forgive me, I need victory. Imagine I'm praying, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, probation closes. I need victory over that sin. Yes, Lord, forgive me, but give me the grace to overcome that sin. Give me the hatred towards that sin. And inspiration says at times, don't even get up off your knees. Stay on your knees until you feel strong in God. What if someone says, I don't feel strong, and the clock's ticking? Keep praying. Someone says, but I'm tired. Well, if you sleep in the arms of Jesus, when you open up your eyes, keep praying. Now, some people naturally sleep in his arms. One minute... Sorry, what's happening? <laughs> One minute, not, <laughs> not I'm just saying naturally, my brother and sister, I used to catch them when they were small. Do you pray? Oh, yeah, I'm going to pray. Let me go and see if they pray. There they sleep in there, on their knees, out for a count. <laughs> then I just tapped the bed. Okay, I'm praying. <laughs> now, what does righteous my faith look like? All that God says, we will do. That is righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith. Friends, may Noah's experience be ours. He received grace, he understood the times, he prepared the ark, and Noah was an evangelist. He was an evangelist. He loved to warn people of the coming crisis. Let us pray. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the time we could have spent studying your word. Thank you for the lessons you have taught us, for revealing to us the events in connection with the close of probation, but also how we can prepare to meet the coming crisis. Father, please, may you help us. We know that human probation is soon to close, and we are living in the final few months of this earth's history. And Lord, I'm really pleading for everyone that is present, those watching, please, Lord, if there is a, yeah, there is no desire within our hearts towards righteousness and holiness, I pray and ask you would create it in the hearts of those who have no desire. And for us, those who are striving, Lord, yeah, I really plead that we would take heed to the words of inspiration, that if we're going to receive the grace and the power, we must plead and agonize for it. Please, Lord, help us to be watchful and to pray and to in, be engaged in the work we have called to be engaged in. A world is perishing in sin, and you have given us a work to do is to warn the world and also our own church of the coming destruction that is imminent, that all might find shelter in Jesus. 
Please, Father, help us to get ready, both physically and spiritually, for time is almost finished. Please, Lord, bless us to this end. And I really plead, Father, that when the crisis comes, we would be found faithful. We love you, and we pray these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious.